We're going to take a look at what's called a dot plot and also a box plot. But to you, what it means is we're taking a big list of data and turning it into a pretty picture. We're going to start with the dot plot, but know that sometimes people call this a frequency chart, sometimes they call it a line plot, but in the end, it's taking this list of data and turning it into a bunch of dots. What this data is, is representing the number of customer complaints at different uh, Barstucks coffee shops locations. So for example, on a certain uh, month, I think this is per month, um, this location had nine complaints. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these individual data points and just put it on a, on a scale. So the location that had 15 complaints, their monthly complaints, that's this dot right there. This location had nine complaints, that's this dot right there. This location had four complaints, that's this dot right there. And if you take all that data and put it into dots, now you have a good visual representation. So now it's very easy to say that if you are a location that had, say, 15 or 16 complaints, your eyeballs tell you right away you have more complaints than most of the places. If your coffee shop had six complaints, well, that tells you that just by quickly looking at this dot plot that that's pretty reasonable. That seems to be reasonable compared to what most of the other coffee shops are doing. Not so if you had 16 or 17 complaints. And by the way, now you can easily see, for example, the biggest data point, the smallest data point. So it's just a dot plot is just a way to turn this list of data into a pretty picture. So now we're going to take the exact same data and we're going to create what's called a box plot. So this is the same data as before. Uh, now it has been put in order from the very smallest to the largest data piece. And what that does is it makes it easy for you to find the median and things like that. So from that list of data, I see my minimum data piece is a 1. My maximum data piece is a 17. And those are going to be two parts of what's called the five number summary. We're going to take that whole list of data and we're going to find the minimum, the maximum. We're going to find the median, which is 6. That means if I start crossing off the smallest and the largest, then the next smallest and the next largest, and I keep doing that until I arrive in the middle, I'll find that the median is 6. The median is 6, meaning that is the middle data piece. There's 50% of the data piece is smaller than the 6. There's 50% of the data piece is larger than the 6. So two new things for you now will be what's called the first quartile and the third quartile. We haven't done these before, so let's take a look. If I take the top or this part of my data, ranging from the 1, which is the minimum, to the 6, which is the median, and I say, okay, I'm going to ignore the other half of the data set, and I'm just going to use that, and now I can find by crossing off top and bottom, top and bottom, top and bottom, and I keep doing that, and I'm going to arrive at what's called the first quartile, and the first quartile would fall right here between the 3 and the 3, so we're going to call it a three because that's right in the middle between a three and a three and my first quartile is three this is the middle number of the top half of the data set I'm going to talk more about that in a second if I did the same thing with this bottom half of the data set I would come up with the middle of the bottom half being the third quartile and that's a nine this is called my five number summary. It comes from this data list that's been put in order. And it's basically the five important numbers that are going to go into creating 
the box plot here in a moment. Down here you see your box plot, but I'm going to show you how you get this. You take your, each of your numbers from your five number summary, for example my minimum is 1, and that's where the 1 is on this scale, I put that dot. My maximum is 17, that's where the 17 is on the scale, I put that dot. My median is 6, I put that dot. The same thing with the first quartile and the third quartile. So my five dots go on to that scale, and then the way you make a box plot is you put a block or a box around your first and third quartiles, and it also includes the median, and then you put what they sometimes call the whiskers out to the minimum and maximum. This is your box plot, but what it does is it combine or it categorizes your data into 25% chunks. This bottom chunk has 25% of the data. This top chunk has 25% of the data. Same thing with this compartment and this compartment. If you keep going with that idea, we know that the median has 50% of the data higher than it, and a median has 50% of the data lower than it, and that makes sense because if that's your median, there's 25% of the data in this category and 25% of the data in this category. Be careful because with this whisker being smaller than this whisker, some people start to think that there's fewer data points in there, but if this whole data set had 40, about 40 data points, that means there's 10 data points in each of these compartments. It's just that these 10 data points are more closely packed together, and these 10 data points are more spread out. Now you might be thinking, these box plots are weird, why would I ever, why would I ever use it? Let's go back to the original data set, and this data set is not in order for you and it's a mess so if I told you your coffee shop had 15 complaints that month and you look at how you compare to the other coffee shops you might not know right away whether 15 is a good or a bad amount of complaints but if you look at this box plot and you're told that your coffee shop had 15 complaints that puts your coffee shop right there and instantly your eyeballs tell you, oh my, I'm in the top 25% category for complaints, which in this case you don't want to be in the top 25%. Your 15 complaints being right here in a snap of a finger tells you that you are way, having way more complaints than all these other coffee shops, and you don't even have to wonder because looking at the box plot tells the story instantly. On the bright side, if you were told that your coffee shop had four complaints, then you would be right in here, and then you would say, hey, I know I'm less than the median, so there's at least 50% and probably more than 50% of the coffee shops that have more complaints than me. So the box plot is a way to take your list of data, turn it into a five number summary, and take those five numbers and create a beautiful picture of your data. And from there, you can come up with categories that involve 25% chunks of your data.